is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Coco Show Them Out. And, of course, this is the voice of the people, and the voice of the people is the voice of God. Now, there are so many stories making the headlines right about now, my brother, my sister. And we need to look at this straight away. Mm -mm -mm. Remember, this is from the newsreel, and we always endeavor to keep it real. My brother, my sister, this is the Black Port, a.k.a. Kuku Shodomo. And now the very first story I would like to look at today. Mm -mm -mm. It's something that breaks my heart every time I have to talk about things like this. I'm reading this from my joy online and it says, I am nearing my grave. Kidney patient cries over dialysis costs hike. And I read, Bafwa Kojo Ahinkura, a long-time kidney patient, has shared his distressing story about the recent increase in dialysis cost, which has left him unable to afford his life-sustaining treatments. Mr. Ahinkura has battled kidney diseases for nine years, unknowingly living with hypertension during the school days. He often felt fatigued and sleepy, assuming it was normal until a severe illness in 2015 led to a life-changing diagnosis. His kidneys had failed. Since then, he has relied on regular dialysis to survive. I skipped my session due to the price increase. I can't eat, although I am hungry, and it is affecting me a lot because I don't want to be too heavy. I've used all my cash for dialysis, and it is really affecting me. I am nearing my grave and my death, he cried. Mm. The country has failed us. Two months ago, a young man came here. He wanted to speak with Captain Smart. Whilst he was waiting to speak with Captain Smart, I came passing by. A young woman approached me and, and asked me to excuse her to speak to me for a few minutes. I said, okay, even though I was in a rush, which I always do. I'm never too much in a rush to speak to people. We put people first. My brother, the young lady pointed at the man sitting there and said, this is my husband. We are here to see Captain Smart so that he would help us at least meet some wealthy people to help with the dialysis of my husband. That is my husband. The man looked very feeble and pale. Today I'm sad to say that as I came into the studio, the lady sent me an obituary. The man is gone. He's gone. I am looking at the obituary right now. And it breaks my heart. Was there anything we could have done to save this man? Has the nation failed the man? How many more tens, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of people in this country would go through the same route? They say there's health insurance, yet there are some health bits that the insurance cannot insure. Interesting. My brother, many people have spoken about this dialysis thing. It looks like our nation keeps failing us every now and then. Imagine this was China. They would have free dialysis. England free dialysis south africa free dialysis america free dialysis you would have free medical care that is a civilized nation in our country 
Civility is a thing of the past. When politicians come in to campaign in order for us to vote them into power, we seem to momentarily forget some of these very important things. All we are looking for is money for our pockets right now to buy kenke and fish as if we will not eat again tomorrow. It hurts me. Everybody is looking for a bribe. All the politicians are coming again. They must pay us before we vote for them. After they have paid you, what is next? They come in and they have to recoup everything they spent in rising to the highest office of the land. All the bribe money they paid you, they will skin all of you alive, milk you beyond milking. They will make you bleed back the bribe money. You don't care, my brother? My sister, you don't care? This young woman today sent me the obituary. Water started running down my face. I broke down. The young man died. She's lost her husband. Her children have lost a father. The nation has lost one more person. My brother, when I look at some of these things, I feel so hurt and so bad. I remember the story of Daddy Lumba. And he himself told me this in k West Studios. He told me, Black Rasta, hmm, when my mother was sick, I had to go to the hospital every day and pay huge amounts of money in order to give her a certain injection that will keep her alive for the next few hours. The doctors had told me that there was no cure for the condition she had. I'm not going to mention what condition it was. That Ilumba told me that he would go to the hospital every time and they would inject the woman she will spring back to life and then they will be speaking. He did it for so long until one day the woman held that the lumber's hand and said, Kojo, auntie, Ube Koswa Yesa, there we are. Doctor Fawcett, mean she a poor dano. They be a baby, but she's scared. No man want me panie. Panie no more want me we are. No man casa two hours, three hours. No man saw come back. Hmm. Ube to me a Koswa Yesa. So how's it going in our best son? Ma, and then your last one, Omo wami pani ene ye bon komo wia. Membe wami pani ye biyum. Nu bono ye din. Vaska no che wom mano. Me nana no mano. When that the lumba told me this, tears ran down my face. What was the condition the woman had? That the lumba said right after the last injection, he spoke with the mother and they embraced. The idea was that the mother did not want him to spend all his life savings on a disease that was incurable. Daddy Lumba said as he was walking out of the hospital, he lurked around looking through the windows to see his mother's last days. The moment the mother was slumping back, after the power of the injection was gone, he ran back and paid again for the mother to be injected. He embraced her again and said, Mommy, mean to me, show us I'm my own wusa. Sky a dean said, Oh, could you mean yes, sir? Me not a nomino, or moon yes, cano. Fasha, moate, me dear, my bomb brack cry. Hey! Daddy Lumba said after the injection, the doctors took him out, outside, far away, put him into the car, and asked him to go, on, to go home, and that they would do well to keep the woman. A few hours later, they called him that the woman was gone. My brother, it is sad how our insurance in these hospitals, the health insurance, continues to fail us. Doctors are making mistakes, left, right, and center, taking lives of people. And it looks like in this country, there is no accountability. How many doctors have we sued in this country? for foolishness and carelessness. This is not to say that our doctors are not doing well. Far from that. 
But there are some doctors who are professionally inept. Professionally dead. My mother was sick whilst I was in America teaching in some of the universities. My brother, my sister, she went to the hospital. They started giving her some glucose solution. And when she started to react, it was then the doctor asked, Oh, was she diabetic? Is she diabetic? Has she ever been diabetic? You didn't care to ask all these things before giving her sugar? The woman died at the Tamale Modern Hospital. Carelessness by doctors. Some doctors never ever account. The other day in Takrari, there was a woman that was sent to the hospital. There were some people who had been involved in accidents. And the doctor had so much work on him. He quickly declared the woman that had come in as dead. Without any checks, nothing. No test. They took the woman to the morgue. The mortuary man put the woman down, ready to prepare, strip her naked, and push her into the refrigerators. But first, he had to go out and drink a petechi. As he was coming back, he was singing those apetishi songs. The woman sat up and was shocked, seeing dead bodies all over her. She asked, Hey, na hi, hi, hey, when did me ba? You know what the mortuary man did? He went looking for a hammer to come and knock the head of this woman. That the woman was a ghost. She had been declared dead by a competent doctor. He took a nurse to say, Hey, Nyabotra, man, Chaden. When they looked at the woman, not knowing at the time, she was just in a coma. The doctor carelessly pushed her in there. And when I was investigating this, the doctors told me that what the woman experienced was what was known as the Lazarus effect. In medicine, they call it the Lazarus effect. When somebody is declared dead, the heartbeat has stopped. But it is possible for the person to come back to life when one or two things come into play. So it is not a new thing. The woman enjoyed what is known as the Lazarus effect. Are our Muslim men trained to know that there is something called Lazarus effect? No, they are ready with their hammers. When somebody comes back to life immediately, pa, pa, before, pa, pa, yakun, ko. How many innocent Lazarus affected people, my brother, my sister, have been knocked back to permanent death? When I went to Guyana a few years back, the doctor who was supposed to test me and send me into the jungles to go and perform my brother, the jungles of Aurora, asked me if I had had malaria before. I was shocked at this question. Because coming from West Africa, malaria is our middle name. I said, I've had malaria. She asked, oh, okay, how many times? I said, about a million times. She said, I'm not joking. I said, how many times? I said, about a million times. And I am not joking either. The female doctor jumped. Her heart leaped into her mouth. She started running diarrhea and shaking as if she had popo blibli. This man here says he has had malaria about a million times. My brother, my sister, in Guyana and some other places, it's not easy to have malaria. Then she shocked me with a question. What kind of malaria have you been having? I said, in my country, malaria is malaria. I don't know if there is anything called uh, something malaria, maybe one malaria, two malaria, or A malaria and B malaria. What I know is that malaria is malaria. And if you are in the Ashanti region, they might say madedia. Wanya madedia. This woman looked at me and said, really? Now she started to educate me. Depending on what kind of mosquito bites you, you would have this kind of malaria or that kind of malaria. In my country, malaria is malaria. Can you ask your doctor what kind of malaria you have? 
Our doctors do not even tell us what sickness we have. They just prescribe and tell us to go and swallow medicines. If you dare ask your doctor, what does this medicine do? He will look at you and say, we are doctor. We are in a mama a year prescription. I will be say, I don't know about it. I will not have it. Now I will go. So unprofessional behavior. So when I see some of these people dying like this, it hurts me, my brother. How many more of our children will be diagnosed wrongly? The other day, a woman so close to me, I don't want to disclose the relationship. My brother, my sister, she went to the hospital and they told her she had ulcer. The woman died. And when the woman died, she was finally diagnosed with what? Appendicitis. So all this while that we were treating ulcer, 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 appendicitis. Of course I understand that mistakes do happen. But when some of these mistakes happen, we have to investigate them and see whether they were intentional or not. To all the innocent people who are dying from this dialysis price hikes, I know that today many more people would go into their graves. Tomorrow, many more would go in there. It is time to unite as a people rather than dividing ourselves on political lines. Whether you are an NDC man or woman, NPP man or woman, it doesn't matter. The, diag the diagnosis is one. You have to go for dialysis. It's the same equipment. We don't have NDC equipment for dialysis. We don't have NPP equipment for dialysis. It's the same equipment and the same cost. And when you die, there's nothing like an NPP grave or an NDC grave. We go to the same grave. <laughs> Another thing I would like to look at is another heart-wrenching issue. And I need you to come along whilst we look at this. This I'm reading from City Newsroom. And it says, Woman burnt to death as mentally unstable sons set house ablaze at Ebuakwa Manshia. Oh, Iradin Yakopon. Oh, Iradin. And I have pictures of the burnt house. Producer, see if you can find those photos. The story is on City News. Ah, and it's a banner headline. It says, Woman bent to death as mentally unstable sons set house. Two siblings believed to be mentally unstable are in police custody after allegedly burning down their house in Ibuakwa Manshia, located in the Achima Nwabieja. South municipality of the Ashanti region. The fire resulted in the death of their mother. Oh, Jesus. According to the assembly member for the area, the brothers had an altercation with their grandmother who lives in the same house and threatened to burn her alive. Sensing danger, the grandmother quickly went to the police station to report the threat. While their grandmother was away, the brothers set the house on fire. Unbeknownst to them, their sick mother was inside the house, leading to her death. By the time firefighters managed to control the blaze, the entire house had been destroyed and the mother had perished in the fire. The charred body of the victim has been taken to the morgue and the police have launched an investigation into the incident. Hallelujah. In this country, we don't take mental health serious. When I'm driving with my children and I see mentally ill people naked on the street, I feel like closing their eyes and saying, you don't need to look at some of these things before you grow. It's sad. There was a day I was driving with my little children around the Accra post office. There was a madman who was having sex with a mad woman. Broad daylight, doggy style. Hot doggy style between a mad man and a mad woman. You know what? There was a heavy traffic. Because people were videotaping them. 
madman was slapping the buttocks of the mad woman pa whilst he was fighting pa, 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 pa. Ha! my little children raised their head they wanted to see as for the little one who at the time was only about four years said that daddy what what are they doing i said they are fooling let's go oh my god my brother Mad people slap us every now and then on the street. The nation has failed them again. Mental illness is not a disgrace. How many more times would we unleash mentally ill people on our streets? Some of them strip naked on the streets. Some of them you see masturbating night and day, including the women. The women masturbate too. There was a, a mad woman I saw at a shy man. In fact, in fact, a mentally ill woman masturbating at the Ashima market there. And people gathered, clapping, and taking videos to post on social media. What are we doing to ourselves? Hey, where are all the institutions that are supposed to have all these people around so they can be given proper treatment? The mental hospitals are all inundated. There's no space, no medicine. A nurse at the mental hospital told me, Black Rasta, I pray you don't come and work here. As for here, hmm, what you see on the streets is, is a joke. If you work here within one month, if you don't get crazy yourself, no, then you are not a human being. When? Will the nation rise to the occasion and deal with some of these things? I leave it here. My name Black Rasta. It's been the Blackboard.